safety for our community and in maintaining this stance that if there's going to be this talk of this dumb shit called a race war, a civil war, whatever that stupid shit is, that talk is, you know, you get certain people like or better than me that will say we are not ready. I'm going to say that. And the one thing that I am that I am against in essence is the optics that fans the flames for something we are not ready for. I will say it again. The optics that fan the flames for something that we are not ready for. And you get people that see pictures like this and they're like, yeah, black Kings stand up. We're ready. And then you see somebody like me who's operationally trained and they're like, not what the fuck I see right there. No, we're not. Because if you look at the young man right here, you know, he has his finger not even indexed, not even close to the trigger. And, 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 you know, I don't care what kind of stance you're in, you know, how ready you are. If your finger's not on the trigger or not clear to it, you're not even ready to even press the trigger if necessary. And that's the one thing that you learn in firearms training is that, you know, you learn to index your finger and keep it ready, you know, when you need to use it. And so if you're gripping that pistol or gripping that rifle or what could be a pistol because of the brace, you know, uh, right there that you're not even ready. Secondly, this is the mindset of our generation. And I hate to say it, but you elders, you know, bow your freaking heads in shame because here we go. You have not, you stopped. You stopped trying because you got comfortable with the shit that you were getting. And because you stopped trying, right? We don't train our generation the right way. What the fuck are you doing with earbuds on attached to an iPhone underneath your earmuffs? You need to be able to hear your environment. And so shit like that, you know, for optics, when you have people that are not trained to do things the right way, that just grinds my fucking gears, you know? And so I just don't like that. Let's go ahead and take a break. And we're going to, oh, shots fired. That's it. Oh, we're going to take a break. It's 1119. Uh, today's the 27th of October. Tuesday, it's 80 degrees outside, even though that's fucking wrong. That's Let's talk about it. So, um, the person you see before you is Mike Brown. He's a firearm instructor in Chicago. Um, he got a, t uh, a show on the Mace Jackson channel. Pretty good show. Um, Mike has a different way of teaching. He's not for the faint at heart. But after I get done talking, I'm going to leave a clip of him breaking down a picture of New Era of Chicago, I think, which was like a... A, you know, community program is getting young black men into guns and ownership, and they do a lot with food and whatnot and uh, community policing and whatnot. But he goes in on the picture. But I, what this? I'm glad he addressed it. Um, I had posted the picture of him clowning the young men, which I understood what he was doing. That's part of his stick, as you'll see when you hear him speak. Uh, and some dudes in my gun group that I posted were in their feelings, being emotional, talking about. Why, why he yelling at them and they're criticizing them and boo-hoo, woe is me. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, his, again, his delivery is not for the faint at heart. <laughs> He's going to come at you. The, way, if I, the videos I've seen of him teaching, firearms instruction, he uh, is like a boot camp teacher. Like He's going to get you out your element, and he's going to do whatever you got to do for you to be prepared and ready to go in the world and use, the, use that tool. But anyways, what sparked me want to do this, or even I'm glad he addressed this, is that I noticed, like, um, because I watched Dr. Boyce Watkins' little uh, virtual meeting town hall thing he did. He had uh, Tesla Figaro. He had my man Tariq on there. Not Nashi, another Tariq from Facebook. Um, he had Faye Bishop, and he had uh, the one far left liberal ex, ex NBA player, Antoine Dick Eaton, Democratic Party, whatever his name is. That dude, he was on there too. And um, one of these black, uh, another, uh, another sister that's. Pro blackity black wokeity woke chick, but anyways, they were talking about like the Proud Boys and white supremacy and this and that. And I noticed like how in unison black people responded to the whole stand back and stand by thing. Like, and my man Tariq, who was too damn loud and too emotional and gotta relax and know how to you know chill when he's doing these type of venues. You know, you can't call black people emotional in politics and then be yelling at the top of your lungs, my guy. Like, you gotta really. Get that in order, which I think he understands and knows by now because um, it didn't look good for him being the black male voice on that panel of reason. But um, I agree with his point, though. Um, we, Of course, you talk, you listen to a lot of these faceless people that people follow online, 
and they talk about white supremacy all day. It's like they can't nut without speaking about it. It's weird to me. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we can't control with that, but there's a lot we can with our own community, and we don't focus on those things. But um, this idea that, you know, the Proud Boys or the Big Little Boys, which I guess is a white supremacist group, or they want to say the three percenters, which their organization says they are not that. But of course, in any group, there's people in it who don't subscribe to the bylaws and the rules. However, I'm just saying, watching how in unison, like Charlemagne gave, talked about it. I think he gave Trump donkey today or whatever when he said that. Um, uh, bitch ass Diddy talked about. Uh, it's going to be a race war. Uh, Tessa Figaro, who I do respect her commentary as an independent who was formerly a Democrat. She was talking about, I know some shooters in the hood. She's very um, friendly with that community, the Pookies and the Ray Rays. That's her space, and that's where she comes from. I do respect her commentary, but she was talking about, you know, we got shooters too, basically. And I'm like, your shooters don't take, why, why don't your shooters take care of the stuff in the community? And that was the point I wanted to make is like, Everybody got all this smoke for the Proud Boys, who are not what the media has portrayed them to be. They are not that. Like, literally, somebody was on, whose video? Um, I forgot the man's name. Uh, one of the brothers um, who's new to the manosphere, he, uh, the lawyer who goes on Fox so often and talks, I think his name is Dennis. But somebody was on there going back and forth, and I'm just like, you have no evidence that the Proud Boys done anything. I literally know, watch the interview of, what they did do that was wrong, and the people who did the thing that were wrong, they're in jail now because they, they beat somebody up. Again, none of it had anything to do with race or black people. They have black members, that doesn't mean anything, but nonetheless, they are not what the media portrayed them to be. So it's almost like you're arguing against a point that you shouldn't even argue against. But nonetheless, there are other groups that are like that, so that's the point. And, but just watching in unison how black people, even in all these black gun groups, which are redundant because they call themselves that, on Facebook, everybody's, you know, pr you know the Malcolm X pose and the window with the gun and this, this, and that. And I'm just like, first of all, <laughs> we're not ready. We're not ready. If you watch that, in fact, they don't have how many misfires happen. Uh, dudes out there with paintball vests on. You got sisters out there with 22s and stuff like that. Them, as Killer Mike, oh, I can't call him that, as Mike Brown, <laughs> my bad, uh, says, like, these boys, if they're going to kill you, they're not going to come up on you and shoot you. They're going to shoot you from you know, floating on the water in a lake and hit you, you know, from 400 yards out and you ain't going to know who did it and the cops ain't going to know who did it, right? Like, like, let's just be practical. Yes, gun ownership is important. Being able to protect your community is good. Knowing how to use the tool is better. We got to be in shape. It's so much, it's more than just buying a gun and taking a class. It's deeper than that and it's bigger than that. One of the most amazing things, and I don't want to get too much into what he said, but he was like, yo, <laughs> we complain about food deserts like that's a thing like we argue there's nowhere to get healthy food these people you talking about the big little boys these boys been hunting since they were two as joe and reed made fun of them by saying these are the dudes that want to go in the war and play call of duty or whatever but those men know how to kill you they know how to hunt they know how to fish they know how to provide food for them families when the stores don't work and, and them 18 were stop stop moving so the goal should be to get to that level as black people, and we got a long way to go. And that that one segment that Helen Mike did at one of those national conventions that Dr. Boyce Watkins had a few years ago, he made the same point. Like, I don't know how to do these basic things. Again, we're complaining about food deserts, but we're ready to go to war with people who've been hunting and killing things since they were two. Let's be practical, my people. But yeah, I'm gonna let him do the rest of the speaking. But I just thought it was weird how, like, in unison. Black folks got tough about these Proud Boys who, they again, they've been in trouble. They've done some dumb stuff. They go to places where they shouldn't be to go be counter-protesters or whatever. If there's somebody talking about rioting and looting, they go try to be the opposite of that. Again, whatever. It is what it is. But they are not these white supremacist group that, like, the Bigelow little boys may be or other groups out there may be. And these dudes ain't playing. And these Twitter fingers that we offer is... Cool, and I was just saying, like, the Tesla Figaro is like, yo, like, let's not write checks to have y'all ass can't cash. Again, how do we, and that's what the thing that bothers me, though, is like, the Tiki Torch white dudes, the, the, the Proud Boys, the Big, whoever they are, they not terrorizing our communities the way what's going on. So we got all these shooters and all these people are armed and know what they're doing, they're ready for the smoke. 
why aren't we doing that to protect our own communities first? Like, it would make sense if we had that in check first, and then we show, yeah, we ready. But we not ready at all. I'm going to let my man Mike finish this off. But that's something to think about. It's not just getting a gun. It's about, and that's myself. Like, I live in New York. Our gun culture is trash. But I'm trying to join, like, actual classes to move with guns and jump and hop and skip. And actually be prepared to learn how to operate with my gun laws. Like, there should be training courses specifically for those of you who live in states where you can only have 10 round mags. Of course, there are ways. And I talked about that in my one video, uh, the AR-15, the options for New York. Well, if she hit the fence, you don't care about that law. You're not going to care about no fixed rack or 10 rounds. There are ways around that, Mike. Definitely. But you should still be prepared to know how to operate and reload quick. Because you are at disadvantage. If you are in a blue state and you follow the laws, you follow the rules, you are at a disadvantage. Period. When Pookie Ray Ray comes with a 30-round mag, a 60-round mag drum, and a uh, um, Draco, they can't shoot. And that gun is trash. Anyways, I don't know why we like that gun. But... Still, you are at a disadvantage if you're following the rules of being a law by a citizen. If you're in New Jersey, if you're in New York, if you are in California and you didn't get to go on Freedom Week and go buy a bunch of 30 round mags, you're at a disadvantage. Not to mention, and this is one thing I know too, a lot of these white boys that live in blue states that got these gun laws, they do not follow them. They do not care. They have, they don't post them and show them on social media and stuff like that, but they got the same guns that they're not supposed to have. They do. They got fully automatic AKs that they're not supposed to have. They have 30, 60 round drums, all that. They got them. Every time I hear somebody, I'm on Xbox Live, you know I can ship you some 30 round. Like, no, dog, I'm not about to be committed felony. Stop. Xbox, Microsoft are listening. Google's listening. Like, let's not do that. But they got them. Even the states they're not supposed to, they go to the state that they can go get them. They go to Virginia, wherever. You from New York, though, that's one thing I will say. When you from New York and they see your license plates or your license, they really don't message you. Like, it's almost like they wouldn't even dare to help you break the law. Like, they are against it. That's why I don't understand how people say that people from Indiana get all the guns to take them back to Chicago. I know in New York, even when it's a legal thing that you can do and have sip to your FFL the right proper way with the right restrictions and guidelines, they still be like, no, nah, we can't do that. I'm like, no, no, this is what the law says. You can send me my gun, motherfucker. I had to say that to the dude at Kentucky Gun Co. when I ordered my first rifle. I basically had to tell him how to ship it to my FFL so that he can make it compliant. But anyway, that's a different story. I already said that in my one video when I broke down the difference between AR-15s that are featureless and versus fixed mag. Uh, I'll leave that in the description. But um, i also leave a description to my gun group, Rifles and the New Spares. The difference between my gun group and a lot of the quote-unquote black gun groups online is we don't call it black, for one. But it's Rifles are our new spares. Is that we actually focus on policy. It's not just about posting all your guns and showing everything off, which we do appreciate and love. It's more about, yo, this is the gun laws happening in your state. This is what happened. This is who you might need to vote for. We don't do that. And a lot of these black gun groups is fuck Colony R, fuck the NRA, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, that's dumb. In my group, we don't do that. So far, there's some new people that came in. Certain words will be blocked and you can't say certain things in there because we're just not playing those games. But as of right now, you can we talk about policy and politics. We show videos of home invasions and whatnot that went wrong and people protecting themselves. Things you don't even see on the media. They don't show these stories. They don't show these things. They'll show you every mass shooting, every school shooting. They all go viral, but they never show you the millions of times every day people use guns to protect themselves. There was a, a, a OnlyFans thought chick a couple days ago who her house got broken into. And, you know, she grabbed the strap because the dudes kept firing. And she asked him nicely, stop shooting. My son isn't here. And she said, you know, I'm going to go get my gun. Then her dude came got the gun and shot the dudes, whatever. But it's like, stuff like that happens every day. People use their guns legally to defend themselves. And you won't ever see that on CNN or MSNBC or even ABC News. Like, you'll see it on a local news stations. But you'll never see those go viral. I'm talking too much. Anyways, get your strap. Go get your permits. Learn how to shoot. Ammo is hard to get right now, so I don't even know what to tell you with that. And guns are way overpriced right now, so yeah, it sucks to be you if you ain't already ready. But yeah, um, check out Mike Brown and go to his show on the Major Jackson channel. He comes on every Tuesdays and Thursday, I think. At I think does it say it on this picture? No, I think it's from eleven. Oh yeah, it says it right there. He's on um, from one to 
He's on from, I think he's on from 11 to 1 every Tuesdays and Thursdays on the Maze Jackson channel. Check him out. That it is. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. So, again, with this picture, again, I love the, 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 the fact that they are holding rifles. I, ha I have served alongside a great degree of uh, great Americans who have decided to, you know, stand up and defend this country, whether you like it or not, whether you hate it or not, whatever the case may be. You know, uh, they have just decided to stand alongside each other and protect each other forward, behind, left and right, stuff like that. You know, I, I love it. And just to see this, it is absolutely amazing. But I cannot stand the errors, the errors that I see in this picture. You know, if, if the goal was to show that this is, you know, them taking some kind of stance. And yes, it could have been some kind of dry fire uh, techniques and things like that. But when you have certain things that are in the picture that shows that this is yeah you said they've been coming out lately uh, i, I want to know what you know what not what i want to know but i wonder where and wonder why you know um but when you look at this picture right here you begin to look at you know okay what's missing from here one they don't have any eyewear you know eye protection now i get some people will say in a real shooting who has eye protection guess what real combatants have those things who has ear protection guess what real combatants have those things you know then you look at the optics of these two wearing ears but then the gentleman in the back he's not wearing any ears at all any ear protection at all you know i look at that and i'm like okay well something is missing from this this clearly couldn't be a live fire exercise because they're not wearing any kind of ear protection at all and so you have to understand that in the gun community in the gun community those who are really trained, stress trained, and those who are actual veterans, we look at details. We look at details to determine authenticity, okay? We look at details. There's times that I've put uh, videos out there, uh, and when I put videos out there, you know, that I've gotten criticized. There are videos that have gone viral. You got some people going to like them, some people going to hate them. That's the, that's the reality of what it is. Some people who hate guns, they automatically attack it. Some people who like it, they see it, and then they're, you, you're never going to please everyone. But the goal is to at least understand how to use the tool that you are using. Then you look at the fact that they don't have any magazines in there, but the dust cover is open. Some of you are like, oh, what's a dust cover? The dust cover is a little cover that's covering the ejection port where the bolt is clearly forward in this apparent AR-15 pistol and or rifle. You know, uh, you look at certain things technically. They could have been going through some kind of, uh, you know, uh, tool handling or, or rifle handling drills or pistol handling drills. Then you look at the optic on here. You got a red dot, red dot optic with a uh, magnifier of sorts. Given the platform of the rifle that you're using, is it something you should even use? You know, is it something that's even necessary for the drill, you know, that you're trying to, you know, perform? Also, there are different levels of ear protection that you can use. One of the things that you want to think about operationally is, you know, uh, there's a reason why when you see SWAT operators or you see uh, Navy SEALs or, or, or Delta operators, whatever the case may be, and they wear ears, those ears are electronic so that they are able to adjust and still be able to hear the environment around them. And so that's that's what I'm talking about. When you look at this young man, clearly with these iPhone or Android, whatever kind of earbuds in that, what signal does that send to someone who is untrained that if new air of Chicago puts it up there then it must be okay it must be approved no that is not approved at all you know your earmuffs if they're not electronic they already rob you of the sensation of a great degree of your hearing so that it can protect you from the loud sounds of the rifle but you don't need to add to that more things that get in the way of your ability to be able to hear your environment, hear commands from your teammates. You see these two people right next to each other. What if the person on the left or a person on his right wanted to, you know, call a command bounding or, you know, moving or, or changing whatever that whatever command they want to call between whatever system they have going on so they can understand each other. You can't even hear because you're fucking playing Chance the Rapper or some other shit in your ears and you're not even hearing the commands. And so I attacked that picture not attacked these young men i attacked that picture because i am sick and tired of people with an agenda 
training our people wrong. I am sick and tired of it. I'm tired of it. Look, I hope someone from New Era Chicago is watching. I, and I love what they do. They got the great breakfast programs and stuff like that. They even got the streets are watching. But then I got one person, I'm not going to say his name, but one person who advertises, hey, the streets are watching. Come on out, such and such date, such and such time. We're going to be in this area. You just fucking told the bad guys, where are you going to be? You're not going to catch shit. We got too much crime in our community for you to be fucking around and getting the appearance as though you're doing something without actually doing something. You see what I'm saying? Just like the food program. What if you sit there and said, hey, come here, it's food. And then they get there, there's no fucking food. You want to make sure that you're able to materialize the thing that you're saying that you're going to do. So if the streets are watching and we got too much crime, what the fuck are you doing telling them where you're going to patrol? They're not going to do shit where you are, you know? You're not moving me or anyone who will be honored to join your cause, right? And in fact, die for that thing until you show that you have confronted someone and have changed and have done something differently than the status quo. You don't, you're not fucking impressing me by going and walking the street. We got plenty of people who walk the streets, who walk by all the time when shit's really going on. You got a domestic situation going on between a man and a woman. No one stops it, but they see it and they record it. You are not fucking impressing me. You're not impressing me when you shut down businesses that disrespect our people, but we don't stop the crime that makes the disrespect possible. You're not fucking impressing me or people better than me when you're sitting here and using our young black kings as optics for fucking likes when you're not teaching them the right way you're especially in the light of this whole well if donald trump wins it's got or donald trump loses it's gonna be some issues we are not fucking ready and i've said that before and i'm gonna say it again then as long as i keep on seeing pictures like this and fucking embarrassments like this i'm gonna keep on saying it we are not ready it ain't sitting here. Fuck around and find out. Fuck around and find out. People ain't afraid of niggas with guns. And I don't even use that word. They are not afraid of niggas with guns. Do you understand that? Anybody in any real combat training will tell you, we only did rifle shit maybe two, three, four weeks out of the whole program out of the whole boot camp, out of the whole basic training, out of the whole wherever you went when you were in the service. Rifle training is just a small part of what makes a combat-ready soldier. And then after you graduate out of the doggone boot camp, after you graduate, you still got more training to do. When you get to your unit, you still got more training to do. You go to the field, you go to MCX, you go to FTX, you go to, those of y'all know what I'm talking about, you go to Graf, you go to Horns fails, you go to uh, uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana, you go to so many different places. You go to 29 Palms, you, you, even, in, even in Buds, Coronado, California. Then you got to go to other places to get your training, your SEER training, your airborne training, your whatever your specialty is, corpsman training. You got so much that goes into actually making someone who's combat ready that it's not just going to a gun store, picking up a rifle, getting a set of rounds, then shooting at a piece of paper and saying, hashtag motherfucker, I'm ready. Stop it with the bullshit. Stop it with the bullshit. You are not ready. We also have to be in shape. Now, I get it, Paul Stye, not afraid of rednecks with guns either. Most cut in the barn with the M7. I, I don't get it. I, Paul, I, I'm sorry, I don't get your comment. You don't have to be afraid of rednecks with guns, but as a person who's shot with rednecks, I'm telling you, if anything happens war-wise, they are not going to put boots on the ground and stare you in your eye. You're not going to even see the bullet that is aimed at you. You're not going to see it. And when it hits you, those around you will see you fall. You won't even know it. They know how to hunt for real. We still trying to talk about food fucking deserts. I'm telling you, stop with the bullshit optics. Let's learn how to protect our families from the shit that's around us. But stop with the bullshit optics. Because if they put boots on the ground, your ass ain't even ready. You can't even get past the damn entrance test to get into the fucking military. Stop with the bullshit antics. Gun usage is our right. 
Self-protection is our right. And realism is our right too. Stop with the bullshit antics. Because unless you're ready to see your lonely ass grandmother that you don't go and visit. Unless you're ready to see her get shot as collateral damage. Unless you're ready to see your kids get shot as collateral damage. Because I'm telling you, war is fucking hell. And we'll be right back with Triggered. 